Today, we will be exploring how Newton's third law affects wave reflection at a boundary. This portion shows a string with low linear mass density. It is connected with another string that has a high linear mass density. Now, this upper figure shows the behavior of wave before reflection and the lower portion of this figure shows the behavior of the wave after reflection. If we have a wave like this and it encounters a change in property in such a way that property affects the behavior of the wave like this one there is a sudden change in linear mass density of the string then the wave can be reflected through that boundary so this point where there is a change in scalar quantity and this scalar quantity changes the behavior of the wave is called a boundary so in general whatever wave you have whether it's an electromagnetic wave or any kind of mechanical wave when it encounters a change in a scalar quantity like this and this scalar quantity affects the behavior of the wave, then we call this as a boundary. So every time a wave encounters a boundary, it is reflected, but its reflection depends on the properties of the second medium. So let's focus our attention first before reflection. Again, this part of the string has a lower linear mass density than this part of the string. So let's call this wave traveling to the right as the incident wave. Let's just designate its velocity as v sub i so once it reaches this point so for example the wave reaches this point so at this instance of time this part of the wave is actually pulling the part of the string with larger linear mass density in this direction let's just call this force f sub a b and by newton's third law by the way i'll just call this the lighter string and the heavier string for simplicity instead of calling this as the string with low linear mass density and this one as the string with high linear mass density so again i'll just call this as the lighter string and this one as the heavier string when the lighter string exerts a force of f sub a b then the heavier string will exert an equal but opposite force and we represent this as f sub b a so during this instance and after exerting these forces at this point after some time there will be a transmitted wave let's designate this as the transmitted wave v sub t and this one as the reflected wave and let's represent the velocity of this reflected wave as v sub r so actually what happens here is that at this instance if we try to draw the effect of these forces here what actually happens that since there is a reaction coming from the heavier string it actually pulls down some of the portion of the lighter string into this direction so it looks like this it's actually pulling it downwards and the reflected wave propagates in this direction so after some time it reaches this point but since this heavier string is not fixed in its position during this time where this part of the wave exerts this force on the heavier string it also transmits some force along the direction of the incident wave that's why there's a transmitted wave along this heavier string when a wave travels from a medium with lower scalar quantity like a lower linear mass density to a higher mass density then the reflected wave is actually out of phase so they differ by pi over 2 or if, if you consider wavelength it differs by lambda over 2 so either way it either differs by pi over 2 or lambda over 2 lambda here is the wavelength so let's examine another case where we reverse the properties of the medium of the wave so let's consider this one what if the incident wave comes from a medium with higher linear mass density and it's about to travel across a medium that has a lower linear mass density for simplicity i'll just call this as the heavier string and this one as the lighter string so before reflection when it reaches this point the heavier string exerts a force and let's represent this force as f sub a b and by newton's third law this lighter string also exerts an equal but opposite force and let's represent this as f sub b a now notice that since this is a heavier string technically it has a greater inertia then even if this f sub b a exerting a force at this point the acceleration brought upon by the heavier string is greater than the acceleration due to this reaction force by this lighter string so in other words it does not reverse the phase 
of the reflected wave. So, after reflection, the reflected wave travels with this velocity, V sub R, and it's not out of phase because it's able to retain its behavior because it has a greater inertia than the lighter string. The transmitted wave along this lighter string, let's represent its velocity as V sub T, somewhat copies the behavior of the incident wave but with less energy because some of the energy is transmitted in the reflected wave. So the energy possessed by this incident wave is somewhat divided into the energy for the transmitted wave and the reflected wave. And notice that when the medium of the incident wave has a greater scalar property relative to the property of the second medium, then the reflected wave travels in phase with respect to the incident wave. This kind of wave behavior during a reflection at a boundary is also exhibited when an electromagnetic wave comes from a medium with high for example, high refractive index and it passes through a medium that has a low refractive index. And when that happens, the reflected wave travels in phase with respect to the incident wave. Therefore, there's no such thing as phase lag or reversal of phase during reflection. So going back to our previous case, for example, if this is an electromagnetic wave, if our incident wave comes from a medium, that has a low refractive index and it passes through a medium that has a higher refractive index, then the reflected wave will be reversed by a phase of pi over 2 or it will have a phase lag of pi over 2 due to Newton's third law. So this is vital when we study thin film interference. To predict whether we will have a constructive or destructive interference coming from a thin film boundary, then we must also consider whether the second medium has a higher refractive index or lower refractive index. Don't forget to like this video, subscribe to my YouTube channel, and hit the notification bell button for awesome updates. Thank you for watching.